I know when we got the first word, um, I got the phone call and, you know, it just takes you to the ground and, you know, I wasn't able to breathe, that kind of thing. It was unbelievable. He had called the night before um, and had indicated that he was on top of a building and that he was going to jump and that there was nothing that I was going to do to talk him out of that. I don't know, the world just seems to come to an end for a bit there. You know, it just, it, it just stops. I'd went through grief before losing my parents and uh, we've lost a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law. And, and um, but this was different. This was totally different. I felt like I became suicidal, like right down to the book, <laughs> like, you know, signs and symptoms and everything. And it put me in a really bad place. It was like really dark and I felt helpless, like there was no way to get out of it. And it was an experience that now has made me stronger, but at the moment it was really difficult. The impact that suicide has had on my life and with my family, our nephew, Tony, died at the age of 26. He had a three-year-old daughter and it was so shocking that he made that choice. He missed her first day of kindergarten. He's not gonna dance at her wedding. He's, he's uh, you know, and, and as far as the rest of the family, um, he he's missing out on all those hugs that we very freely give and all that love that we have for him. We're just, we miss him terribly. The big thing is, is to avoid like alcohol, drugs, that kind of stuff. You know, you always hear that, don't drink when you're depressed. And that's a big thing <laughs> because it changes your whole line of thinking, your whole frame of mind anyways. That 50% of people that abuse alcohol are more likely to become depressed enough to consider suicide. When you're down in a, a dark pit, you know, so far down and it's, it's so dark, there's no daylight. And if you can just reach out to one person, that brings a little bit of light in. And once you have just a spark of light, you can start seeing the people that are out there and around you that want to help, that care about you. The night before he passed, he did reach out and unfortunately nobody called anyone. We use the suicide prevention hotline. I don't know where I'd be today if it wasn't for them. When I was at that point, like, they pulled me out of it. I actually had a buddy of mine, a really good friend of mine, that basically told me if I didn't make the call, he, they would. <laughs> and that, you know, it, it was like this big anxiety attack right before, and it's like, oh no, oh no, oh no. But then afterwards, it was like the weight was lifted off my shoulders. I felt so much better, and all of a sudden it was like I wasn't alone. It was like someone was there with me. Certainly reach out to somebody. Certainly talk to their doctor, talk to a counselor, you know, a pastor, priest, somebody that will understand. Um, if you go to somebody and they don't, go to somebody else. I mean, there are people out there who definitely understand. When you're in that sp position, it's, it's really tough because people tend to blame themselves and that's just couldn't be further from the truth. A lot of times, you know, we don't learn suicide prevention in grades K through 12. <laughs> you know, you don't have to do that in order to graduate high school. We all shared that guilt that we hadn't reached out to him at just that right moment, that we weren't able to let him know that we were there for him. Somebody taking an interest in me is the reason why I'm still here today. There's always another option. You know, at, when you're in that spot, it's like you feel like, all the pieces are torn apart and there's nowhere to go and you're hopeless and helpless and you feel like there's nobody who understands. But there are people out there who want to help you. And there are people out there who has made it their career to help you and who have such a passion for it that they want to see you succeed. And you know, sometimes when you get knocked down and you're in like pieces parts, you can rebuild stronger than what you ever were. I know that's a delicate subject where people would say, listen, I don't want any help. I'd rather them be alive and be mad at me than be gone and say, well, that's the way they wanted it. That if you think that they're thinking about it, they've probably already thought about it. The thoughts cross their mind. It's not like you're gonna put it in their head. When you're in that position, it's like if one person asks you that question, if one person shows that they are in tune enough with you to help and that they want to be that person for you, then that makes a world of difference. But certainly, 
don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to get help. And don't be afraid to stick with it. Um, never give up. Don't ever give up. Do whatever you do with love. Let them know you're doing it because you care. If this helps one person, it'll be worthwhile. <clears throat> one person.